Today I'm cooking Asam Pedas Ikan Pari, a delicious spicy and sour stingray curry. It is great to have it with rice and my family will love it. This recipe is for 6 to 8 servings. Let's start off with marinating 950 grams of stingray fish with half tablespoon of salt. Turn and rub the stingray until it is well marinated with salt. You can find out how to wash and clean the stingray fish in the Seymour link. Cover with cling wrap or place it in a container with a cover. Place it in the fridge to marinate for about 20 to 30 minutes. While we prepare the rest of the ingredients, wash and cut all the vegetables for the curry. Cut 120 grams of tomatoes, removing the stalk, and cutting them into 6 wedges. Set them aside on a separate place. Next, cut 70 grams of 4 anchor beans, remove the tip of both ends, and cut them into 3 parts of 1.5 to 2 inches in length. I cut them diagonally for a sharper appearance, but you can cut them with a straight cut as well. Set aside together with the tomato. Next, pluck the leaf of 50 grams of Vietnamese basil, which is also known as daun kesom in Malaysia. They give a lovely fresh taste to the asam pedas. I am plucking the major leaf from the stem while leaving the leaves on for young stem. Set all the black leaf aside. I am using 170 grams of okra or lady's finger for the vegetable as well. Remove the top part and leave the rest as they will be cooked whole in the asam pedas. Leave them on the plate and set them aside. Now, let's make the paste. Starting with the most fibrous ingredients, 15 grams of yang galangal, which is cut and chopped into smaller pieces. This helps the blender to blend it better. Next, 50 grams of 2 stalks of lemongrass. Cut 1 into thin slices for blending. And the second piece is for the curry, which is cut into half or about 3 inches long. It is better if you can smash them lightly as well. Place the galangal and lemongrass pieces into the blender. Next, roughly slice the stem of 1 stalk of ginger flour or bunga kantan. Cut the flour into half. This half goes into the curry. While the other half is cut roughly to be blended with the stem. Then cut 80 grams of two small red onions. Cut one into thin slices for the curry. And roughly chop the other into small pieces to be blended. Alright, add the small ingredients into the blender and set aside the rest into a smaller plate. Next, cut 80 grams of red chili into smaller pieces. This will go into the blender as well. Cut 100 grams of turmeric, which is thumb size, into 2 to 3 pieces. Leave the skin on to prevent yellow stain. Peel and wash 35 grams of garlic and 100 grams of shallots. Add in 100 grams of chili paste, making sure to scrape the side. 20 grams of balajan or shrimp paste and 200 ml of water into the blender for easy blending. Alright, let's set up the blender and blend the asam pedas paste. You can also use a pre-made one, but I like using fresh herb for a stronger fragrance and lovely flavor. Blend the paste for about 1 minute or until very smooth. If the blending is difficult, adding slightly more water will help it to be smoother. After 1 minute, the paste is ready. Leave it aside while we preheat the oil. In a standard steel pan, switch on the heat to medium-high and add 50 ml of unscented cooking oil and wait for about 30 seconds for it to warm up. Then, add in all the blended paste. This paste is light gold. Make sure to scrape the side until the blender is clean. Then, stir until the paste and the cooking oil are somewhat combined. 
and the paste has started to boil. Add in 40 grams of palm sugar, which is cut into small cubes. It will gradually melt as we continue stirring and cooking the paste. It takes 10 minutes of continuous stirring for most of the liquid to evaporate and for it to become slightly dry. This also prevents the bottom from burning and less battering as the paste tends to bubble vigorously when it is very hot. Alright, after 10 minutes, this is what the paste looks like. Add the cut lemongrass, onion and the bunga kantan that was set aside in a plate. Continue stirring and cooking until the paste becomes even drier. This will take around 5 more minutes. After 5 minutes, see, the paste has dried up so much. This is what it should look like. Clump together and stick a little to the spatula. It is also super fragrant now. Then, add 300 ml of concentrated tamarind water, which is also known as Asam Jawa water. You can find the recipe for concentrated tamarind water in the Simo link. Add 600 ml of water. Stir to mix until the liquid and Asam Padas paste are well combined. Cover the pan and continue to cook it for 5 more minutes or until the curry boiling vigorously. Meanwhile, take out the stingray from the fridge and remove the cream wrap. After 5 minutes, the asam padas is boiling. Stir lightly to evenly distribute the ingredients and paste. And give it a taste. It has a lovely balance of sourness and spiciness, but there is not enough saltiness in the gravy itself from the shrimp paste. So I am adding quarter tablespoon of salt, which will complement the fish and the vegetable later. Raise the heat to medium high, as we want the curry to boil vigorously. Add the stingray gently piece by piece around the pan, without moving the pieces that are already in the gravy to prevent them from releasing the fishiness. Here is a tip. Cook the fish in high heat. The faster it cooks, the less fishiness released to the gravy. Then, spread all the vegetable on the top. Okra, 4 anchor beans, tomatoes, half of daun kasum. Cover the pot and allow them to cook for 8 minutes or until the stingray are cooked. Alright, after 8 minutes, open the cover and reduce the heat to medium-low. Now we can stir as both the stingray and vegetable are perfectly cooked. Give it a final taste. Wow, this is great, very delicious. More seasoning can be added if preferred. Lastly, add the cut bunga kantan and another half of daun kasum. Stir a little and pour some curry on the vegetable. Switch off the heat and we are done. For the best result, let the curry rest for about 30 minutes before serving with rice. In fact, asam padat tastes even better the next day once all the flavor have been fully released and mixed. Let's dish out and serve. Let's eat! It's great! The stingray are fresh and sweet, going really well with the sour spicy gravy. There is not a hint of fishiness at all. Asam pedas ikan pari take a bit of effort, but it is so worth it. Enjoy! This is Home Cooking with Somjit. Thank you and bye-bye!